Hey guys, Rico Rocks Without One here making yet again another video. I'm going to show you a process on how to take apart a Nintendo 64 and such. To take out the Jumper Pack or Expansion Pack or whatever pack you have, you originally have a cover, but this one didn't come with one. This is one I found at a thrift store for like who knows how much, but it works. Anyway, what you're going to want to do is take a flat tool. If you have the tool that you that came with the Expansion Pack, you would use that instead of a whatever you got lying around. If you don't have that, you, my recommendation is either use this, a car key, or something flat enough that can pry out the jumper pack or expansion pack. Then once you're done, you take these, you flip the unit over and remove six screws on the bottom. Now to my foreign use, from, now from my foreign, uh, viewers who live in like Europe or Australia or Japan your sticker system is going to be a bit different you will have the control uh, for my European viewers your control deck sticker would not be right here it'd be right here and your uh, serial number would be right here same with the Japanese people their serial sticker will be right there once you're finished removing those six screws you take these feet off they're just for s to stand stability then what you do is you flip it over, pry the top off, and that's what the inside of a Nintendo 64 would look like. And here's what the lid looks like. Now to my foreign viewers, your plastic top, not just the Europeans, but the Japanese people also have a different top. Ours is gray, and the tab systems are on the edges of the cartridge, like that. For my Japanese and European subscribe, uh, viewers, you will have a black piece instead, and your tab systems would be right here and right there in the middle. Well, a little indent to prevent American cartridges going into the systems, but that was Nintendo's way of preventing Japanese and American cartridges going into each other. So, if you want to take this piece out and try to do the mod, there are going to be two screws right there. And the flaps will fly out if you take this out. To press the buttons out, you press these little tab things right here and here. And to clean them up and such. Now, here's what the board looks like. You have the heat sink right here. Metal piece, power switch, reset, expansion slot, and power light. The Pokemon N64 board is a little similar to this, but it has fewer screws on the heat sink and such. But if anyone wants me to tear that apart in a different video, please let me know. So, yeah. And there's not going to be a power light on that because there's going to be a ribbon cable or a wire or cable attached right onto one of these controller ports. And that's because Pikachu's cheeks will do the light. Well, that is the power light. So, once you're ready to get back to taking apart, what you're going to want to do is grab your Phillips screwdriver and take it apart. I'll do that off camera to show you what happens after you take out every screw. So, bear with me. After, if you have all the screws removed and put them in a safe place, I have them on this bowl thing right here. These are the long screws for the cartridge slot. These four are for the uh, power and the AV cable. These right here are for around these, and uh, these right here are for the heat sink. The black and the uh, silver with the thing around it are for here and here. And you also have two tiny screws right there for the expansion slot for the jumper pack or expansion pack to work. If you're having problems, if the game doesn't read, if the contacts are the problem, then you're going to need to clean out the contacts, both the expansion and the cartridge slot. Once you remove all the screws, you can remove the heat sink. If it's dirty, I recommend giving it a clean. Here are the pieces for the uh, expansion stuff. Put that to the side right here. The metal shield around it. And here's what the guts looks like. The later N64s, besides the Pokemon one, all have these uh, things around it. However, the early ones like this, this one, copyright 1996, if you remove this right here, ah, trying to remove it without the uh, 
without accidentally breaking something. Has two chips right here. On the later ones, only has one chip. So, the Funtastic series have only one chip right there. And it has all these things right here. I don't know if they're uh, capacitors or uh, caps or something. I don't know what they're called. And these are the chips uh, for the uh, region code, but I'm not going to do a region mod on this to play European games because I don't know how to do it and I don't attempt to destroy this N64. Besides, this color is like my original 1996 N64. I don't know what year I originally had an N64, but at around the time we had Super Mario 64 and Diddy Kong Racing. I want to say 1997, but I'm not 100% sure. This is what the back of the board looks like. If you have the Pokemon system, the wires will be soldered right here or right here. Here's the expansion slot for the N64DD. If you were going to build a portable out of this thing, you would need to break the contacts off of this, unfortunately. Because the DD was never used in the U.S. There were a few accessories that used it. And here's the male shielding on the bottom. Here are the rest of the guts. Here's the power light down right here. The thing for the N64DD to screw in. And that's the back plate, or the back panel for the N64DD. There are a few accessories that use the slot besides the disk drive N64DD thing. There was the Dr. V64 and the CD64 Plus. Now, I don't think anyone else owns those peripherals, so the expansion slot is kind of useless. I tried fitting an N64 game into the slot on the bottom, but it didn't do anything. And I don't attempt to try to force it in because I don't want to break the, any of my cartridges, unless it's a crappy sports game. Maybe I'd do that, but I don't want to destroy the thing overall. Ah, sometimes putting the... Uh, expansion uh, the AV multi out this is a separate piece so if you were gonna paint this like your console you're gonna also want to paint that if you wanted to and such so that's pretty much the inside of an N Nintendo 64 so if you were gonna do some mods like uh, change the power light what you're gonna want to do is snap out this LED and solder in a LED that uses the same voltage or Perhaps if it doesn't use the same voltage, you need a capacitor to put on as well. So, yeah. If you're having problems, always check to see if the power solder points are good. If the cartridge slot is, uh, if none of the pins are bent, the video slot is good or not. And be sure if the controller ports work. So I'm going to probably test this out before I actually fully put it back together, but I'm going to put the heat sink on it because I don't want to overheat this thing like what Alex Kermit did in his overheating an N64 video. I'll put that in the description in case anyone wants to see that. So I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it and show you it running in action. I should mention before you fully test, before you put it back all together, you want to be sure that the cartridge works, the AC adapter is good, the AV cables are good, and the jumper, jumper pack is inserted. You're also going to want to test out all four controller ports before you decide to, you know, end up selling it by, uh, for parts. So I have a... Hang on. I do have the... Um, Turn it on and see if it works or something. Ah. Well, you're also going to want to be sure that the cartridges are clean. And power it on and see if it does anything. Not sure if you can see the TV, but it does work. And there you have it working. It's good to test it before you, uh, fully reassemble it and say, oh no, it doesn't work. I'm using a portable TV right now just to show you how it works. So, yeah, that's the intro. You can't beat classic Super Smash Brothers.
try to angle it and show the TV at the same time. It's kind of complicated. Oh, there we go. Put it in versus mode and check to see player one works. Select Kirby just because he's awesome. And then you grab another controller and plug it into player two. There you have it. If there's a problem with the, uh, make sure it's fully inserted before you end up saying, oh no, it doesn't work. And wiggle it a bit to see if it still works after that. This is my gold super pad controller. I believe I mentioned that in my older video. Then you grab another controller. Let's grab my clear black one, because I do have a smoke black system. And plug it in to see if it works. Uh, yes, it does. And uh, sometimes if you wiggle the controller ports, it will disconnect or something. And grab player four, and be sure that works. And there we go. All four controller ports are working. So it's a good idea to always check to be sure if the controller ports are working before you put it back all together or to see if the expansion pack's working or if everything else is working. Because if it isn't, you're going to want to... And if you put the case back together, you're going to want to open it up and do that. That's a bit of a hassle. So it's best to test it when you have it. It's best to plug it in before you put it back fully together. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this and end off the video. And that concludes my video on how to, you know, take apart N64 and see what's wrong with it and such. Um, once you're finished, you hook it up to your TV. So... Also, it's a good idea to have spare jumper packs or expansion packs and N64 consoles in. Try to keep an older TV in case your newer fancy TV does not have the component jack and such. Uh, or um, if they won't work with the, uh, you know, the regular composite cables. So that's pretty much it. This is Rico Rockstyles 1 saying thanks for watching.